Hello YouTube friends, welcome to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and today I want to tell you about the project I'm involved with here. It's the middle of March when I'm filming this and outside it's white as far as the eye can see. We've had a big dump of snow, not serious snow, it's melting right now. It does make everything look beautiful but it's all sort of like one colour out there. So I thought I'd do something really, really colourful and talk to you about that today. Now, a few years ago, two I think, I made, um, a, I think it was a series of three videos all about the mat making project I was doing to make myself a draft excluder. It works perfectly, by the way. <laughs> I've been using it ever since and it's it makes the uh, kitchen really warm and cosy. And so that was a technique called hooky or proddy matting. And so what I want to talk to you about today is the other one of those um, types of mat making. That one uses clips of bla uh, wool blanket, in this case dyed, or clips of anything that are about, you know, that's kind of long, and po poked into a piece of hessian or burlap to make a very kind of furry mat. The technique that I want to show you today, I've been doing this for a long time and I've stuck some of these pictures up here beside, behind me that I've made over the years and we'll have a closer look at them in a minute. But this one's a good one for doing uh, more detail and, and maybe little pictures and so on. Uh, you can make mats in this technique, but um, it, it's great for pictures and that's what I like to do. I like to make these small pictures. So yesterday when the snow drove me in from the garden, I got this map frame out, I'll show you in a minute, and I made uh, some little, some of the little pictures that I like to make. I actually filmed all of that and that's over on my Patreon channel if anybody wants to see a little bit more about how I made particularly the, the little pink and black uh, man that's on this run of Hessian here. So, uh, what's the difference between the two techniques? The mat that I made for my draft excluder, I used this hook. It's not a hook, it's a prodder. In fact, this one, I really love it. It's a rivet from the shipyards that's been sharpened. I love this, this one, it fits into my hand really well. But in order to do this technique, you need a hook. And so you need a, um, you need to hook the fabric. And so I've got this beautiful tool here, which just sits beautifully in my hand. Now, let's talk about the pictures behind me, because um, this is a good medium for doing something a little bit weird and out there, which is definitely what I like to do. So if we look at each of these pictures here, so the yellow cat, <laughs> that one was a, a picture that I made from my son John's uh, 18th birthday. So that's a long time ago because he's in his mid-30s now. And before his birthday I said to him, John, um, what, what would you like for your birthday? I said, I want to make you a mat, what would you like? And he just got the back of an envelope and he just, three seconds, he just drew this cartoon cat. And that was it, never mentioned it again. And so I took that image and I made it into these, this cat in the colours of his he likes to support Sweden's football team, national team. At the time he did anyway. So this is blue and yellow for Sweden. <laughs> and he, when he opened it on his birthday, he, was, he got some proper presents as well. But he was a little bit surprised that I'd actually made his throwaway design. <laughs> I really enjoyed making that one. And uh, surprisingly, he didn't want to have it. So he, he said, you can keep it, Mum. Thanks a lot, John. I wonder why he didn't want it hanging in his house. <laughs> so the one underneath it I made for my um, other son, Owen. Now, Owen's favourite meal, at the time anyway, and maybe I made this for his 18th birthday, um, was uh, a full English breakfast. And so I, I made this mat for him and you can see that we've got sausage and bacon and eggs and beans and tomato sauce and all sorts in there, mushrooms as well, and a, a, a checkered tablecloth. And what I did for his birthday, I laid that mat down on the table and then I, I made the exact same meal, put the knife and fork where the knife and fork were and put the meal on top of it. And then when he moved it aside, it was all there in, in matte form. <laughs> and strangely, he didn't want it either. He said, no, no, mum, you can keep it here. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, <laughs> that's what I did. Now the other one, this big square one here that's got a nine design thing going on, uh, that used to hang in the corner of the kitchen for the longest time. Uh, I, I don't know why it isn't there anymore, maybe I'll put it back again, but it was upstairs. And then the one below it is uh, just like a little panel that hangs in my porch. Now those are four that I've got. Uh, there are a few more actually. Um, yeah, there are quite a few more dotted around the place, but those are the ones we'll talk about today. But then I also wanted to show you the ones that I made yesterday that I put on my Patreon channel. So let's just have a look at them. They're on this frame here now. Oops, a daisy. What's going to happen when I lift that up? Hang on. There we go. Now we'll show, I'll show you this one first because this one is um, this is a design I've made before. They're all weird. These there's none. Of, there's no. You know they're very strange. I like strange. So this one is like, um, someone once called it a hairy carrot because I've made this in a couple of different colourways. <laughs> this, I haven't got them anymore. Uh, they've all been sold to other people. So this is my, my new one, uh, pink and a tealy colour. This next one is just a load of dots on a black background. I'm not so bothered about that one. I'm not sure whether I like that one or not. And then the one that I made yesterday, let me get in the right way up, is this pink guy here. <laughs> And he's inspired by uh, the art of a graffiti artist called Keith Haring, uh, who uh, was in New York and, and, and he died sadly, uh, but he did these fantastic graffiti paintings. Maybe you've seen them. And so he's kind of um, inspired by that in this pink and black kind of way. Now, those, so those are the three that I made yesterday. They're quite quick to make when you get going with them. But what I want to do now is cut these off and show you what this frame's like because I'm going to make some more. So once they're off the frame, then I'm going to cut these carefully in half. I haven't left much room here, but there'll be enough to do what I need to do. Because once they're off here, I'm going to fold this little bit of hessian back. And you'd be surprised how much different it looks when you get rid of the hessian. So I'll fold, I'll fold those sides back, then I'll get a piece of felt or a piece of fabric or something and stitch that down so that that will be, all the hessian will have disappeared. So I'll just cut these two apart as well. I'm kind of interested to see what this black and pink one looks like most of all, because um, if we get rid of that hessian there and this, and these two sides. Yes, I think I'll finish this one so that you can see what it looks like. It looks so much better once you get rid of the edges. There you go. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do now though is show you this mat frame. In that last video where I made the um, draft excluder, I had the biggest mat frame, massive thing that I was fighting with, struggling with this thing. This is a lovely mat frame. In fact, I think it might be for uh, embroidery, uh, for doing large embroideries. Now, it's got this lovely system. You put this dowel through a um, a little thing that you... I've sewn the edge down. What am I saying? Let's get rid of that. I've just folded it down and sewn it down so I've made a casing for this um, wooden dowel to go in. 
and then that if I get this piece here this slides into here and if you're careful you've got to get the first bit to feed in properly and then the whole thing just slides in with the other one if you remember back to then I had to stitch it on with um, this thread I had this very 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 strong uh, thread and I had to stitch the hessian onto the frame but look how cool and quick that was and then the other side I've just sewn a, a casing on this side for this one let's just get that in there come along little piece of dowel got to find the little hole that it goes into through it goes and then this goes into the other side it's good isn't it I really like these frames my dad bought me this one many years ago there we are and then we push that all the way through and then I have these strainer crossbars here and this is uh, too wide for this bar so what I'll do is I'll roll this on like so and I, that's probably big enough for yeah and then these will fit through nicely and I can put the pegs in and that one fits through the holes there I don't know who made this mat frame I've tried to buy another one since smaller one and um, I've never been able to find the company that makes them so I'm sorry I can't leave you the link to this but I think they're probably if you search for them I think you'll probably find them or something like it easily enough this side goes in here then if you remember back to that video I was struggling on with that map frame for like 10 minutes and there it is done and then in order to make this work I now need um, now it did come with beautifully whittled little wooden pegs but I can't remember where they are so I've got four nails that I now this is how this works I'll just stand up to do this part okay put one in that side like that and then one in the same place this side and because I'm using nails show you like that and then push down on here I'll just move that out of the way I've got a cup of tea here what's the betting that it all goes flying let's try not to make that happen so then I push down on here and I put my next nail oh can I get it down there yes I can just see that one there in there and on this side the same I can get it into there now because I'm using these nails and they're a little bit sharp on the back I've got corks that I stick these corks onto the nails it works it would be better if I could find the pegs wouldn't it yes everyone's nodding <laughs> so that one goes on there like so and on the other side the same so that keeps me from snagging my jumper or whatever And there's another one in this box here somewhere. It must be on the table somewhere. Now, what I'm going to do now then is mark out the next thing that I want to make. This is my quilting ruler and this one's six and a half inches and it's just about the right size actually. So let's just get this my way around. And I can fit three of these six and a half inch squares along one run like this. So there's the end there. So I'm just going to use a sharpie and I'm going to make, I'm just eyeballing this. You know, I could measure what this is here and here, but I'm, I'm fine with it, eyeballing things. And I'm, so this is six and a half inches wide. So I'm making a line from the six and a half inch mark here. And the sharpie's great because it just marks on here and if you change your mind you can uh, and want to design a slightly different thing 
you can easily do that by just drawing because this gets covered up. Okay, so now my six and a half here and that marks out a perfect square for the next thing I'm going to make. And I've got a feeling I'll make a dot and this tape just happens to be there. So I'm going to draw around this tape. It was just sitting on the table and I decided I was going to do one of my dots. There now. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything at the moment, but I'm going to cut some um, strips now. Uh, I'm using felt at the moment. I have got in here, you can use, um, so you can use wool blanket like I was for the uh, mat that I made for my draft excluder. And these are just strips of uh, sweatshirt material. Uh, you know, the kind of stretchy jersey stuff. And I've got quite a lot of those. This here, if I can reach it, this is a pair of old pink tights. Uh, and this is a great, um, they're thick, they're not thin tights. This is a great material to use because it's stretchy. Just a tip, if you are going to use something like this knitted, always go, don't go across the knitting because it will just unravel. Uh, but if you go with the knitting, it will, it will have a bit of strength to it so that you can easily use it in this mat. So here's a bit, look, that I've already cut from there. And so you can see that it's stretchy, but it's perfect for this kind of work. In fact, why don't I use this for the middle of this pink dot? Yes, I will. And then we'll choose something else for the outside because I've got quite a few of these already cut. Let's do that. There we go. Yes. Why? cut more when they're already made. Okay, great. So we'll put those aside for now and I'm using, where's my lovely hook? Where's my lovely hook? I'm using my lovely hook. Right, it's really great if you've got a couple of trestles or chair backs or something, but I'm finding that this works perfectly well if I jam it like that, I sit comfortably here and I jam it like that and then I can work on this bit here. I'll just move the side a little bit so that I can move up. And just like last time when I was um, making the draft excluder piece and I was doing that different kind of technique that's called um, proddy or proggy matting. I worked that from the back and, and, and poked the fabric through. With this one I'm working it from the front and the fabric is underneath so I can't see where the fabric's coming but I can feel. Okay so I'm just uh, gonna start anywhere right here and then I pull up the fabric like so and leave that end like that. Once that end is completely surrounded by what I'm doing, then I can cut it off and then we're away. And I just put the hook down about two or three um, threads across, not into the next hole, but maybe, yeah, maybe three threads across. And there we go. What I'm doing is I'm feeling from the underneath. It's like my hand underneath is my eyes. I can't see what's going on under there, but I can feel it. And so I'm just, I'm folding this fabric in half with my finger and thumb so that that bit is the bit that I'm presenting to the Hessian. And then I just poke the thing down and bring it up. By folding it like that, it means that you get a really nice even bobble on the front rather than these raw edges sticking out. And that's it, I'm off now. And for a snowy kind of afternoon like this is, then having the fire on and a cup of tea and maybe a good audio book, something like that. That's me sorted for the rest of the afternoon. So I'll finish this and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Very strange, but loads and loads of fun.
it's very it eats a lot of fabric you have to kind of have lots of these little clips cut so stay tuned till the end and you'll see the finished piece but for now I'm just going to carry on working if you've enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up and when you do the subscribing make sure you press the notifications bell then you won't miss any time that I post a video leave a comment down below I try to get to as many of them as I can and don't forget that there's a much more extended version of this over on Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon with something else.